All right, hi guys, welcome back to Note to Self. Some of you guys might know that I'm actually recording both on video and audio now, so you guys can check out my YouTube channel if you're already here on the YouTube channel. Hello, we're gonna do a solo episode today. This is something I do every month. If you're new here, it's called Ask P. I'll let y'all submit your questions to me and I answer them to the best of my abilities. Obviously, I like to leave a little disclaimer at the beginning of each episode like this. I don't personally know your situation. You know your situation best. And in typical notes of self style, I want to urge you to always go with your gut and with what you think is right in every situation, because I don't know all the details. I only know the little information that you give me. Today's episode, I chose five Ask P questions. Some are shorter than others, um, but they kind of resonated with me and I felt like these are ones I could definitely answer. Sometimes I'm asked questions that are like slightly a little bit too deep where I'm like, I don't even feel right attempting to answer that question. Um, but today's questions are pretty good. You guys can find the Ask P submission form uh, in the show notes on Note to Self, either or really wherever you get your podcast. Mostly I listen on like Apple or Spotify. And I know you can like find all the information there. There's a little link and you can anonymously send in your Ask P question. Make sure you give me all the details possible um, so I can give you the best advice. But again, remember, the most important thing to remember is you know your situation better than some random person on the internet does. So the first one is kind of short and sweet, but I definitely wanted to include it because it's something that was that Joe and I talked a lot about. Um, Joe is my boyfriend if you're new here. Joe and I talked a lot about this topic um, while we were like getting to know each other and then like later when we reflect back on like why we think it worked out, we thought it worked out so seamlessly. Thinked. <laughs> Y'all just said thinked. <laughs> okay. So this asker says, would love to hear any advice you have on how to act in the initial stages of dating. How do you keep your cool and make sure not to rush into anything too fast? Love you, XX. Okay, love you too. So one big thing I think Joe and I did really well, and this might have something to do with the fact that we started dating when I was 26 and he was 27, same age basically, um, is that we weren't ever playing it cool. We were never like playing a game. We were always being ourselves. And I think we ended up working out seamlessly because no one was pretending to be someone else. By that, I mean, I use like my own humor. You know how sometimes you, you send a text and you're like, I don't know if they're going to get it or not. Like, I'm worried they're going to get it. Like, am I going to have to explain this joke later or just be like, oh, never mind. Ha <laughs> ha. Like awkward. Cause that's definitely happened to me before. I don't know if y'all know what I'm talking about when I say that, but for me, that's definitely happened before where I get nervous if someone's going to understand my humor or like what I mean by things. And I would second guess, or I would ask my friends, how do I respond to this? Um, in the best way, which is a little bit putting on a front, like, it's like that person is now texting your friends. They're not texting you. So the one number one thing is to be yourself. And I know that can be kind of like annoying to say because like, what the fuck does that even mean? Um, and the reason why I say I think that Joe and I were good at this at our age is because I knew a lot more about myself than I did when I was like 22, you know? Um, and every single day I'm 28 now, I know even more about myself now. But I was able to be confident enough in myself to just show my true colors. I did not consult my friends for how to text him and he didn't do that either. So for that reason, we really got to know each other really well versus what each of us wanted the other person to think we were. <laughs> and that is so key when getting into a relationship. Let's see, how do you keep your cool and make sure not to rush into anything too fast? So I've never been a, a rusher, I wouldn't say. Um, so for me, I would assume like keeping my cool and not rushing a key for that is to have your own life and your own things going on. So like this relationship, this like initial stages of dating is just a tiny, tiny portion of your day to day. And you're not like focusing on it too much because that allows you to kind of be aloof. Like it looks like you're playing it cool, but you're really not playing it cool because you're just like doing other stuff. Um, so it's not really a game or anything like that. It's just that you're busy. You've got a schedule, you've got friends, you've got family, you've got work, you've got your hobbies, your extracurriculars. I'm actually really excited to move to LA because I 
want to pick up at least one new hobby in this next season. Um, and I found this really cool, like sewing school (laughs) in LA. It's so random, but I like to pad my schedule with things like that because then I don't focus too much on any area of my life. And I feel like my life is really well-rounded. And I think that's great for the first stages of dating. So yes, be yourself, keep yourself interested and engaged in life and busy, and you will be more interesting and you won't fixate so much on a relationship. And I feel like naturally things will just progress at a more natural timeline um, when you're not focusing on moving the relationship forward. Just that's not top of mind. The next asker says, I've been feeling very alone lately. Even though I have a good relationship with my parents and boyfriend, I just feel so empty and alone on the inside, which I hate. I'm currently trying to juggle school, work, making content, a potential internship, and being in charge of content for a brand, and I just feel so tired with life. How do you find ways to keep yourself motivated? So this is really hard, um, and I've talked a lot about my experience with depression, and that's kind of what depression feels like to me, which is just like, I'm tired with life. I'm tired with absolutely everything. What's the point? I'm on this like humdrum rotation of just like the things that I have to do. And then you look at your life though, and you think nothing is bad. Like I've got, you've got a good relationship with your parents, you say, and your boyfriend, but you're feeling empty and alone. Okay. So there's, I have like kind of two parts to this one, the emptiness and the depression. I don't know if you're depressed, but to me, that's what it kind of sounds like. Like this is how I describe myself as a depressed person. As I've said many a times, I would definitely go talk to someone about that feeling because it's possible that you need to start positioning your day-to-day life as if you might have depression um, or be depressed, you know, just in this moment um, and do whatever you need to do to give yourself a better mindset, so to speak. What's hard for me is is depression, in my opinion, the logic behind it it seems the most logically sound. Like you're empty, nothing matters, all that stuff. Oh gosh, all that stuff. I um, I feel like that's like a very realistic look at life. And I, ha- I heard someone tell me once that like people who are depressed have the most realistic point of view of what life actually is, which is kind of, <laughs> kind of depressing. <laughs> but for me personally, to get rid of that feeling, I just went on antidepressants. I tried to kind of fix, fix my depression naturally over the course of 10 years. And there were just so many things I was trying to do to alleviate that. And for me, going on medication was the best option. If y'all want to hear more about that, y'all can listen to the hot girls take their meds episode. I believe it's episode 50. I'm not really sure, but I kind of talk about my decision to go on antidepressants, my experience with uh, depression and anxiety, like my entire life. And, uh, we just dive into that topic a little bit more. So of course I'm not saying you need to get on medication, but definitely go talk to a professional about this. I think that's step one. Um, And then in terms of trying to not feel empty and being motivated, my simple answer to this is I try something new. I switch it up. So again, with the hobbies that I want to do when I move to LA, because there's so much, there's so many options for things to do there um, because it's such a big city, but try a new hobby, add something into your life that just makes you have to work your brain in a different way. So things aren't so repetitive all the time. You know what I mean? Uh, plan a little getaway, plan a trip. Um, I see you're starting a, a potential internship. That could be a nice thing to kind of throw in. Um, but just kind of disrupt your day to day with something that genuinely excites you or challenges you or makes you just feel different. I think this is so, so important. And I, I find that to be really important when I am depressed to make sure I'm not getting into this like kind of empty, boring routine of stuff that I have to do because then it just makes me not enjoy my life. (laughs) Like, I just feel like I'm here just on a fucking hamster wheel and we don't need that. So definitely add some things in there. Make sure you're always planning things that just make you excited. Um, because these are really important things to add into your schedule, even though it's not stuff you have to do, you know, um, it's important for your mental health and that kind of bleeds into every area of your life. And with you saying you're feeling very alone lately, I find it 
interesting that you phrase it this way. Um, I feel very, very alone just day to day. I've always felt alone, even when I'm surrounded by a bunch of people, but I try to look at it like a good thing. Like I try to look at it like I'm having a very intimate experience with myself and I'm a very important person in my life. I realized like when I was younger and I felt alone and more empty, I wasn't viewing myself through a positive lens. So I didn't see, (laughs) I saw the me being alone part as like me hanging out with a fucking loser, which was myself. (laughs) But now I know I'm fucking awesome. And however you need to get yourself there, if you need to like mind fuck yourself into thinking you're awesome, that's what I did (laughs) over the course of years. Um, I started realizing I'm really the number one person that matters in my life. So me being alone and hanging out with myself essentially is amazing now. And I like it. I feel safe. It feels like an intimate moment. I'm experiencing my own story and my own path. And so I just kind of switched my perspective on feeling alone and it made me feel more purposeful and it made me feel like more like life is like a game. Like I'm just like the player and I'm playing the game and I'm doing all the stuff and I'm trying all the new things. Um, and it made me really grateful for the experience, um, of having this time with myself and my physical body. I, I started looking at it as a good thing. So I would just say, try to start looking at it that way. It's not you hanging out with yourself who's like a loser. <laughs> it's you hanging out with the most important person in your entire life, which is you. Um, and honestly, I feel like there's always, as a human, you're always going to feel like a little bit alone because you're the only person in your body experiencing your thoughts, experiencing your life and not most people aren't going to 100% understand what's going on in your brain. That's only for you to know. Um, and I think that that's kind of beautiful. I also heard something, I can't remember where I hear these little bits and pieces from, but someone, I think it might've been a, a movie or something. And she was saying like, you're born alone, you live alone and you die alone, which is kind of true. People could be there with you, but it's your own personal experience. You're always going to be alone. I would get used to it. (laughs) Um, but obviously connection outside of yourself is really important, but look at it in a different way. I love being alone. I feel most comfortable alone. So when I see life through that lens, I feel, I just feel better. I feel more comfortable walking the earth. All right. Next. I keep rethinking slash replaying how this guy and I ended and it's making me regret what I said, even though in the moment and weeks after I was proud of myself for communicating my standards. So I guess my question is how to not replay scenarios and think about what could have happened or what you wish you would have done. So this is hard because I think we always remember things better than they are. Like you, you communicate your standards. Like you said, you did, you were proud of yourself. And then a few weeks later, you're like, "Eh, I'm kind of lonely. Like I kind of wish I had that attention. I wish he was here. And then you start replaying these small moments in like a freaking video montage in your brain. Like it's a, uh, like a romantic novel (laughs) or a rom-com. And it's like, for me, it's like slow motion. Like the time that they were giving you a hug or you were like making out with them or whatever it is you were doing. And it's like this, like lovey dovey music in the background. Like the person like is dead. (laughs) Does that just me? I feel like it's easy to get into like montage mode. Okay. Cause your brain is trying to trick you into thinking it was better than it was because obviously this person wasn't meeting your standards and this always, always happens. So I think logically knowing that is important though. It doesn't help and stop maybe the feeling of it. Logically understanding that, that your brain will remember things better than they were. And there is a definitely a reason you got away from this person because they couldn't obviously meet the standards that you were explaining to them. I'm assuming that's why you're not with them anymore. Cause you told them, um, these are my standards and they refuse to meet them or didn't in whatever way. So you need to logically remember that your brain's tricking you. Your brain is basically always tricking you. I feel like, um, but yeah, your brain is tricking you. The feelings are natural. I think that's part of life to feel those things. Um, and you're gonna replay the moments for a little bit. But again, as many of my answers to these questions are, is just do new stuff, make new memories, allow yourself to start thinking about new things. Um, and I feel like that kind of variety starts kind of pushing those memories, fake memories that you're creating in your brain of when things were wonderful, even though they weren't because they weren't meeting your standards, it allows you to replace those memories. And maybe you date around, maybe you, 
you start making memories with a new guy or new multiple guys um, and fulfill yourself in that way if you're feeling like you need a little of attention lately. Um, but try new things. That's my answer to all these questions so far. I'm really on the try new things thing right now because it's truly the cure to everything. Cure to boredom, cure to feeling empty. It's just getting out of your comfort zone, challenging yourself in a new way. And then in this way, let's say you go on dates, whatever it is, you're making new memories. We're pushing the romantic montage out of our brains. And I also think it's important to give yourself grace because this is normal behavior and all of us do it. Um, so don't feel too bad about doing it and just let yourself feel it. Okay. If you want to feel like you miss him and you want to feel lonely, whatever it is, just feel it. It's part of life. It's okay. All right. The next one. Hi, Peyton. First off, I love your podcast so much, and it's the only one I truly look forward to listening to. Thank you so much. I have some relationship advice on a boy I've been hanging out with. I've had some relationship advice on a boy. Maybe she says, I want some relationship advice on a boy I've been hanging out with for a couple months now, and it's clear we both see each other as more than friends, but he says he plans on moving away for his career soon, but just doesn't know when because he needs more money to do it. A part of me thinks he won't actually move away and will stay, but the other part knows how much he wants to pursue this new job. I don't know whether or not I should keep hanging out with him and get more attached or let him go and find someone who isn't planning on moving away. We've had conversations about what is going on between us, and he says that it is complicated because he wants to move, but then gives me so many mixed signals, and he wants to keep hanging out and doing stuff together. Should I go along with it for now and just see what happens or just cut the ties now? I'm 22 years old and don't have any other great guys around me to date and almost want to keep this boy around and see if something happens or until someone else comes along. But I also feel like I should forget about him entirely uh, if he's just set on leaving one day. Let me know what you would do here. It would be greatly appreciated. Haha, <laughs> dating is rough these days. I will agree. Dating is rough. Dating is really rough. And depending on where you live, totally um, understand like this could be like the only guy <laughs> that happened to me. Um, I feel like in my hometown, there like weren't very many people to choose from. Um, okay. So in this question, the way you've worded it, I feel like there's so much worrying going on about things that could happen that aren't actually happening right now. So I understand that you're concerned about him leaving. And I also understand, um, that you're concerned about getting attached to someone, uh, and him leaving one, in this situation, I would date long distance. I know it's not for everybody, but Joe and I started long distance. We were long distance for a year and a half. We just made it work. I will say I have the leisure of working for myself, so that makes it easier for me to go visit him. Joe does not have that leisure. He, When he's in baseball season and stuff, his schedule is so intense, and they play every single day. He couldn't really make much of an effort for those eight months to come see me, though I could do it for him. So we were in a special situation, so when I say just do long distance. Know that it's coming from a very specific situation. Like if you work remotely, it's a little bit easier. You get, you catch my drift. For me, long distance is totally worth it. If it was someone that I really connected with, all my relationships actually have been long distance. The three that I have, Joe is the only one that has lasted, I will say. Um, so I would consider long distance if you really like this guy and if he's on board with it. But of course, that's a conversation for you both to have. I don't really know your opinions on it. The way that you're talking about him moving away, I would assume you're kind of thinking long distance just is a no-go. I would say focus on the moment right now. If y'all are having a good time, don't overcomplicate it right now with something that may or may not happen. Um, I know as a person who might be getting, be getting attached to this person, if he does end up moving away, that could be painful, but also I feel like it would suck if one, he didn't move away and you just distanced yourself. And now you're just like back at square one again with this person or two, you always have in the back of your mind, like, what if, like, what if I would have given it a chance? What if I would have done this? What if I would have done this? I would say go for it because you don't want to have the what ifs. I'd personally rather have like the feeling of missing him or, you know, being a little let down that he didn't stay and that it didn't work out. I would prefer that over a what if scenario. 
Um, and I wouldn't get too in my head about what may or may not happen, um, or what should happen, what I should or shouldn't do. I would just do what, what feels right in the moment with this, because I think relationships are always built on, on having experiences with people in the moment that they're there and not worrying about when they're going to leave or when they're going to go. Um, cause you start putting your defenses up and I just feel like a relationship won't come out of that, a good relationship at least. So the only way to give it a fair shot is to just remain in the moment and continue to hang out with this person if it feels right to you, obviously, and you're still into him. And don't worry so much about the future right now. Because also you're 22. Like if he does end up leaving um, and you guys don't do long distance, you'll be fine. I promise you'll be fine. It might hurt, but you're going to be okay. <laughs> All right. So we're on our last one. We're actually going through these really fast and I'm kind of sad I didn't get like a few more. Um, but anyways, we'll just, we'll do the last one and this will be somewhat of a shorter episode. Okay, guys. So my boyfriend, hopefully soon to be fiance said he's hesitant to marrying me because my parents can't afford more than a $50,000, more than $50,000 to devote to our wedding. It feels so sad to me that a four year partnership could go down the drain because he feels he quote deserves more for his wedding. My parents are amazing, hardworking people, and I feel like 50000 is an incredible amount to devote. Any advice? Um, it's giving Groomzilla. What the fuck is he talking about? I hope this is fake. I don't know. Is this fake? <laughs> uh, first of all, if he's so Mr. Moneybags, why doesn't he just pay for it? $50,000. I don't honestly know how much weddings cost. Um, my little sister had a wedding and I know how much that cost, but it was a massive wedding. Um, why is this man telling you what your parents should be able to afford? That is so fucking rude. And I think that I hate him. <laughs> I think that I hate this man so much. Does he do this like day to day? Is he like mad if you don't like buy him stuff? What is going on right now? Honestly, hot take this would never be a man that I would consider to be my fiance because this is just like major red flags all around. Unless the man is going to step in and be like, Hey, I want this for my wedding in particular. So I'm going to put up the money for it because it's my thing. Like for example, my parents paid for my little sister's wedding, but her, her, the groom's parents really wanted an open bar and my parents don't drink very much. And they weren't like into the open bar vibe, which by the way, how are we so different? <laughs> Anyways, because the groom's family and the groom really wanted an open bar, they paid for the open bar. Like, that just sounds normal. Like, why is this man wanting you to front all the money for his wedding? Like, where are we planning his dream wedding? I just have so many questions. I want to talk to this man and just, like, and just, like, have a real conversation about why the fuck <laughs> he is wishing this upon you. And I really do hope this is fake. This actually makes me like mad. I'll be thinking about this for like a few days and I'm going to tell Joe about it and we'll, we'll get Joe's reaction too. I am shook more than $50,000 to devote to our wedding. And you're right. $50,000. That, that's a lot of money for a party. So he can shove it and you can let him listen to this podcast episode and let me know if he wants to DM me so we can get in a fight because I'll do it. <laughs> I'm pissed. <laughs> Um, yeah, if he wants something, he should be paying for it. The end. If he wants something specific at the wedding, that's going to cost more than $50,000. Tell him he can, he can kindly pay for that expense. And that's the end of that one. I have nothing else to say to this man, but bless your soul for being with someone like this. Cause I could never. All right. That was a pretty short episode, but I feel like I got all the questions. I got a good, like different kinds of questions to answer. Um, sometimes, like I said, the questions are like a little bit too intense where I feel like I shouldn't be answering this question for anybody. Um, and I know sometimes my answers are not what people want to hear. <laughs> I'm like, be yourself, try new things. Um, they're very, they feel generic, but I'm telling you, you can implement these in your daily life. And there are some things in my life lately that are just like themes in my life that have absolutely changed my life for the better. So I'm sharing them and I'm really excited. This is my first solo episode that I've also recorded via video. Um, so I hope you guys like these. I really need some suggestions on what guests to have on the podcast. Y'all know that I am, 
I'm kind of protective over who I have on the podcast because I want to make sure that they can, I don't know, give the same kind of feel and energy to the podcast that I can, which is kind of just having an intimate conversation rather than like providing an instruction manual for things. Um, It's not very scientific. It's just kind of a a combo we have amongst friends. And some guests I feel like are so knowledgeable in certain areas, but it's easy to come off more cold when I'd prefer something more warm and intimate and just like simple and laid back. You know what I mean? So let me know who you guys want on the podcast. I really want to have more of my friends on the podcast. I always love having Kimberly on the pod. I'm probably going to have my friend Laurel at some point on the podcast. Um, So let me know who you guys want. You can just DM me. You can comment in the comments of this YouTube video and I will try to work my magic and see what we can do to get them on. I definitely want to have someone on to talk about topics like sex, um, PCOS, detoxing from stress. That's a big one. And I want to have like an actual doctor on for most of these topics. Um, so we can discuss and I can give you all the best information. So it's not just me being like, just relax and be yourself (laughs) for like actual technical topics. But you guys can find me on Instagram at Peyton Sarton, as well as on TikTok at Peyton Sarton. I have a new vlog up this week um, about my experience at Fashion Week. I feel like it's a little bit of a different Fashion Week vlog because like I said many a time before, I wanted to position Fashion Week as a like as an experience that you're coming with me to versus um, me trying to give you FOMO and make you see how cool I am. Because <laughs> we all know She's just a normal bitch um, who just goes to fashion week sometimes for her job. So I have that episode up on YouTube right now. As far as the video episodes for the podcast, Note to Self comes out audio um, on Thursdays, wherever you get your podcast. The video portion comes out on Saturdays. So it's a little bit delayed. You guys can always listen to Note to Self. Just the audio, like I said, every Thursday. But thank you guys so much for spending this little moment of your day with me. And I will talk to you all next week.